Do you ever just take like toothpaste and just squirt it into water and then you don't brush your teeth? I'm gonna I'm gonna choose <laughs> to believe that that's a joke and that no, I, no one's ever actually done that. Oh, I'm sure someone's done that. Like, why the why would you do that? I don't know because people are idiots. So I mean, like, I'm sure someone somewhere has that's, tried that's to making drink. me feel nauseous thinking about that. For yeah, some reason. that's disgusting. Okay, well, anyways, on that note, welcome everyone. Dipped in Tone, season two. So um, here's the deal. We're gonna wrap this season up here in a little while because we've got mm. something big coming down the pipe. Pike or pike? <laughs> well, it's it's on the it's coming down the pike. Yeah, but um, that's something what is a, big coming down the pipe sounds like Well, that's true. <laughs> like you're taking a dump. I don't it know. might be that though. <laughs> no, it's see. the pike. It's coming down the pike. What does this mean? Coming down the what is a pike? I mean, I know like, what a turnpike like a, is, but like a a pointy stick. Uh yeah, okay. I know what it means. I just want to know what Okay, is it down the pike or down the pipe, Marion Webster? Uh, my pretty the sure the original of phrase. In the future, oh, the first of these significantly older, well established in England, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> Losing interest. Origin of down the pike. Pike, uh, in this case, is short for turnpike, which can, perf- which can refer to any main road, but originally referred specif- specifically to one on which tolls were collected. All right. There we go. I feel like the phrase has to be older than a turnpike. I, for real, for one, am very glad that we uh, took the time to get to the bottom of that. Welcome to Dipped in Tone. The whole point of this intro is to tell you that in the very near future, we have a very big announcement coming for the show. Yes. And some things are going to change. Hope, well, definitely for the better. The show's going to get more consistent, first of all. Yeah. Uh, And we're going to be bringing in guests. And uh, I don't know anything else you want to disclose at the moment. Hmm. Uh, I think I think we're just going to be delivering more on all fronts. So things yeah. people things people have asked for, uh, you're going to get it. And oh, it, most importantly, our lives, Rhett and and, and Zach's life are going to be a lot uh, easier regarding Eas- this. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's so a huge win for us on that the, front. The, the easier it is for us to do the show the better it's going to get, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm not sure exactly when we're going to announce. Maybe next episode? Maybe maybe not? I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, so the last episode, I, I just want to say, Addison had been killing it with the edits, but I came to work today, and I was like, I'm gonna, I'll drop it all. I'll get it on. I got the video up before I left the house, but then the audio, I was like, I'll just do it when I get to the shop. And when I was uploading it, the internet just stopped, uh-huh. And w- I just thought, well, I'll do it later. And then I turned it off, turned off the upload, and I tried to download a PDF that was 2.8 megabytes, and it uh-huh. said it's going to take 20 minutes. So that's what I'm working with. Yeah, you're, you're stuck in 1997, that feels like. Oh, man. I feel like my 56K speed. modem was faster than this. Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. Uh, yeah. So that's, well, I don't know if that's going to change, actually, in the new <laughs> in Dipped in Tone 2.0. Well, I, hopefully this won't be my problem as much. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, anyways, the point is that, sorry, I was reading the discord chat. Um, point is that there's a big, big change coming. We're very excited about it. Um, hopefully you are too, but the main thing is show's going to be better. Uh, it's going to be more consistent. It's going to be easier for us on all fronts, which is a huge win. So, um, and if there's anything you want from us that you, you think we should be doing, you want to see us do just your ideas, leave them in the comments, uh, hit us up on Patreon, on Discord chat. Just let us know because, I mean, I think, like, building the community is what made has made this so great, and we want yeah. to keep that. So just well, send and us your ideas. Well, and building the community is what has allowed us to take this next, next step. Yeah. So, um, yeah, thank you to those of you that have watched and supported and subscribed. We're over 10K now, so thank you for that. Yeah. Um, Matthew D. in the uh, Discord chat, the Patreon set, Chat says, don't change the name. All those puns will be wasted. We're not changing the name. Not changing really nothing. So. Well, we're changing everything, but also changing nothing at the same time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Everything's changing, but nothing's changing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, oh, merch will be, will finally become a thing too. Yeah. As part yeah. of this new, uh, this new endeavor. So anyways. All right. Well, there you go. That's the intro. Zach, what's up? What's been happening in the last week? Man. Uh, so we're, we're just uh, we're working on some new stuff. I think I've sent you photos of everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll have a drop 
pff, hopefully next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the thing I do every Halloween uh, is coming. Yep. Uh, so that's coming. And then another thing's come. We have, I, I finally like had all these ideas and we're actualized, actualizing them. And since everything else is kind of caught up, we're, um, we're like just kind of prepping everything. So the end of the year is going to be super easy, at least fingers crossed. Uh, I'm reworking mythospedals.com. So I'm making a new website, which is like, I don't know. It seems a lot harder than it should be. I've done this for so long, but, um, Doing well, that. that's where you use the sponsor of today's video. So I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> dang, no, that was dang. perfect. Yeah, exactly. That would have been a great Square ad space. read right there. Squarespace. I actually just left Squarespace. but You did? Dang. Yeah, I did. Where'd you go? I'm, I'm still here. I'm right here. Oh. No, no. Like, not, not what <laughs> internet platform? Uh, we switched over to... Sh- we can talk about this offline. People don't care. Oh, but okay. we switched oh, to I Shopify. Know. Right. Yeah, because of the, the courses and the whole thing, it was easier. Anyways. Sure. Well, that's cool. New drop. Your uh, your your yearly uh, Halloween thing is coming mm-hmm. and new and improved. Different, yeah. Different, different. So nice, cool. What about you? Um, well, I've got a lot of stuff happening. We're kind of burning the candle on both ends. We got another video course done, a mini course done that's out now. Bare bones guitar theory, and uh, we're about to start work on the last sort of big course for the end of the year. Hopefully, have it out by Black Friday. The, these these big courses are so much work. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. So, um, been working on that and got my last show for the year. I believe it is coming up October fifteenth in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Noah Guthrie and Good Trouble. We're putting on our very first festival ever. Great right. Blue Wall Festival. Gr the number eight Blue Wall Fest. It's happening at Freight Yard in uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina. So y'all come out and see that. It's going to be a jolly on all fronts. Sweet. Um, what else? Saw How Adam Neely. Tickets? I don't know. <laughs> you, just, you can look it up. Uh, yeah, but they, figure it, it out. Is a, it is, I will say it is a charity show. It supports a charity oh. called Pack Jam. So um, Sweet. however much tickets are, just know that it's going to a good cause. So there's that. I saw Adam Neely's band in town. Oh, right. Sun Gazer. A few nights ago. Sun Gazer. It was killer. Got to catch yeah. up with Adam. Had dinner with him. And the opening band... Uh, Wednesday Night Titans. If you haven't heard about these guys, you should check them out. Um, Kevin Scott, longtime Atlanta staple. Uh, this is his project. It is a um, improv, slightly improv, super heady, really fun music, but pro wrestling themed. <laughs> so. Okay. <laughs> They're all dressed as pro wrestlers on stage. They all have pro wrestling egos on stage. And then behind them is a big projector screen with some of the coolest visuals ever of like wrestling footage from the 70s and 80s and early 90s that they're playing over and that they've modified and mixed to like fit the vibe of the song. And then the drums, they have their rigs set up so that the drums are actually triggering a lot of the visual elements. Oh, cool. It's a vibe. It is so fun. So cool. So Wednesday Night Titans, they kicked ass. It was so much fun. Neat. So, um, yeah, outside of that, you know, still trying to find a truck. Um, <laughs> it's tough out here, man. Like, these yeah. dealers, I, I don't know what, I don't know what we're going to do. It's, it's crazy. Just have to <sighs> suffer without that truck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I kind of need one, though. My, mine's Toyota's little, uh, she's getting up there, so. Yeah. Man, my, my poor... Uh, ID four. Now that the heat's back, I was like driving to work today. It's like, oh man, that's the worst thing about the electric car experience is how quickly the batteries drained by using the heat. Oh uh, yeah, or using the air. Like during the fall or the spring, it's like, oh, this is great. But when it's hot or cold, you're like, man, I can I can drive like one trip or something. It's just yeah. Ridiculous. I think this will probably be one of, if not the last, gas powered vehicles I drive or like yeah. as i buy as a daily driver i think you know five six years from now the electric vehicle thing is going to be much more feasible than oh, it yeah. is now so i'm you know i'm going to get as as much of a gas guzzler truck <laughs> as i can it's a complete antithesis dude to electric i told you did i tell you i, I test drove a ram trx the other day no <laughs> oh my god uh for yeah well, this isn't a car podcast so we'll we'll move on from this in a second but turning into it <laughs> it's uh do you know what the TRX is? I assume it's something crazy if it's got the name T-Rex basically built it's, into it. It's basically the Hellcat truck. So it's got oh, the okay. Hellcat V8 in it, 700 <laughs> horsepower V8. Um, something that big and heavy has no business moving that fast. It scared right. me. Like, it properly scared me. Man. Um, 
That's exciting. So, <laughs> I, it was very exciting. <laughs> I talked to the guys today. Like, I, I'm sure I've mentioned that I have the Ghostbuster. Uh, yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the Ghostbuster car. Whoa. Uh, Sorry. And uh, I want to restore it. And it's like, it's in a state where it, it's like every, all the work can begin. Like all the chromes there, all the parts except for the interiors there. And the interior is like, you'd need like a mile of carpet because it's so big. But uh, I'm thinking eventually, probably within the next couple of years, I'm going to get all of it and just take it to like, you know, a shop and say, make it happen. And, I'm, yeah. and then well, I had a thought, let's turn it into an electric car. Because you know what? A 59 Cadillac weighs about the same as my Volkswagen. <laughs> well, people are doing that now. There's yeah. a there's a guy I follow on TikTok who's got a Barracuda. I don't remember what year it is. That mm-hmm. he's totally like Tesla swapped. And it's ludicrously fast. Yeah. I mean, it's it's insane. So yeah. um, uh, speaking of, yeah, old cars, we uh, my, my truck, Black Betty, we blew up the motor in it. So yeah. it's going to need. Uh, but our plan is to uh, LS swap it. 5.3 LS. 4L80E, uh, pull a junkyard 5.3 out of a Yukon or something, do cams, do head work, and my my goal is 400 horsepower to the wheels, which in that truck will be scary. Yeah. So. Yeah, Dave Jordan says, shift in tone. But you <laughs> hey. know what? Okay, I'm just going to say something about podcasts. Uh, now, this is pertinent to what we're doing here. All right. Um, and we talked about this the other day. All the people complaining about, get on the topic. Every podcast I've ever tried to listen to always starts with like a recap of the episode you're about to listen to. Uh And then right, they're like, okay, let's get into it. And then there's an ad read. (laughs) You're like, what is going on? So everybody complaining about us talking about our personal stuff and being friends in real life, just shut up. (laughs) Look, that's how my podcast used to be. Um, And it's a great format. It works for a lot of shows. Yeah, sure. I just, I never had sponsors. I never had an ad read, but I would always start with the recap and it just felt it was this this format works for us. So here's the deal: yeah. I mean, you don't like it, you don't gotta listen. Or that's right. Uh, there's there's some kind folks in the comments section that are usually leaving timestamps of when I we always, get on topic. I always timestamp the main topic in the yeah. in the description. So so quit complaining. <laughs> God, free content. Okay. All right, so let's dip it rig. All right, we got a good one. Bam! Look at Ooh. look how look how even it shared this image. That is so nice. <laughs> All right. We got to we got to cover it. First of all, props for a great photo. Yeah, great photo. Great photo. Um also, props because that is a uh the love seat version of the couch that's in my room. Um I forget the name of it. There's a name for it and the real mm. ones are crazy expensive, like 10 or 15 grand. Mine's a knockoff that I got on Facebook, but yeah. What is that called? That that couch called? Uh well, we'll have to ask him. Matthew Dickin is in the chat. He's from the UK, and he discovered the pod a month or so ago and has been uh, catching up, which is awesome. He says, we're the best guitar podcast by a mile. Hey. Which is awesome. Bravo. Uh, so what we got here, great photo. Great Killer photo. photo. Killer photo. Uh, but what we have is uh, a Fender American Original 60 Strat, mm-hmm. an Epiphone USA Casino, Ooh. a 63 SG Junior. What year is your Junior? 65. Ah, um, and I think that's all that's in the photo here. So I'm just going to focus on that. And then the pedals, we got a jam wacko, wacko, Barcelona chair. Thank you. All right. Continue. Is it cause it's a wa? Yeah, it's a wacko. Wacko. Okay. Uh, the jam dinosaur, diet, di- dinosaur. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Just say uh, dinosaur. <laughs> dinosaur. Uh, this, uh, MXR 74 reissue phase 90, a jam rattler. Uh, Boss DD3, the uh, Deluxe Memory Man 1100TT, which I think has all the, you know, good chips. Yep. A Grobert the One Chorus, a CE1 clone. Wow, cool. Hall of Fame Mini, ditto, and then an Iridium, and he's using some York Audio IRs and nice. just running into headphones. So I don't I don't think, uh, I think uh, Matthew's in the chat, so I don't know if he's got a an amplifier. Yeah, amplifier. Matthew D. Yeah, so let us know if you've got an amp amp. Oh, he um, says... He used to have small amps to play at home. None of them sounded as good or were as practical as the Iridium setup. So, Dude, cool. so a couple weeks ago, uh, the we were playing in uh, Florida for two shows, okay? And this is pertinent to this, all right? And there was a band opening in front of us, and they were killer. Guitar player's name was Austin Skinner, Nashville guy. Unbelievable oh, I know player. Austin. Yeah. I've known Austin for years. Oh, cool. Yeah, so it was, I, I met Austin on this gig. Now, the first night we were there, they were playing, and they sounded great, and I walked out, and I... 
I could see his rig. It was one of the Chris Stapleton Princeton's, the signature Princeton's with the 12 inch brown panel. Mm -hmm. And then I could kind of see his board, but there was no mic or anything on the Princeton. I was like, how is he getting to front of house? And so during changeover, I went and looked at his board, Iridium. Yeah. And the second night, uh, during sound check, I went out front. So he was splitting his signal, just using the Princeton for stage volume and sending the Iridium to front of house. And uh, dude sounded unreal. It was super, super good. So um, yeah, that's my story. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Austin has started doing stuff on YouTube. So go check him out. Austin yeah. Skinner. Really yeah. great guy. Great player. All right. So first off, I really, really, really want to try one of these USA Epiphone casinos. I love yeah. my casino. It's almost identical to to this one here. Yeah. Um, I took the pick guard off and I changed the pickup so it has now it's black covers like this one. But I really want to try out the American version to my Chinese version. Yeah. Um, they God, they look unreal. They look so good. Everyone I've ever seen, uh, I think I might have strummed on one at NAM when they announced it. But just like I see them at Guitar Center and around town and they just they look fantastic. I mean they look, you know, they're they're Gibson quality because you know Gibson's making them, but they, they just have like a vibe that is wholly their own. Yeah, first American-made Epiphone and since, what, 64, I think, 66, something, something like that. Something like that, yeah. I don't yeah. Know, it's all been Japanese or, you know, in the other Chinese places. Yeah, killer guitar there. Uh, oh, yeah. American original, Strat, super cool. Yeah. really like I, those a lot. I'm kind of needing a Strat again, so yeah. I don't know. Uh-oh. Yeah, I got a bug. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, of course... 63 sg jr no humbuckers no humbuckers true mm -mm. you got the p90 thing covered although that there's no there's no crossover in sound between that casino and that sg even though they have the right. same kind of dog ear p90 that they those two guitars don't sound the same at all N no yeah 100 percent. yeah they are not <laughs> they're not i mean there's like there's small similarities but not enough to like call them the same yeah which is a point in the camp for people that uh or point against the camp of people that think the only thing that matters in an electric guitar is the pickup. Uh, right. No. All right, cool. So then uh, pedal board. Waco. I've got a Waco. I love it. It's great. Man, I want to make a Wah so bad, but I cannot, for the life of me, figure out where all these pedal companies are getting these good Wah enclosures because mm. everyone I've ever bought in like a raw, like just the raw state, they're not put together. Mm -hmm. I mean, kind of obviously, right? But none of the holes are tapped. Oh. And they send you self-tapping screws, and I've had I've had a couple, and I've broken them, and I'm like, how how are these people doing it? So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, jams jams is a little bit different. It seems to have. Um, I'm looking at mine over there. I it's been a while since I've compared it to my first pedal ever. Was a Hendrix signature chrome top. Um, Hendrix signature and I've literally worn that thing out my buddy yeah. Ben Forehand used it for years he or over yeah he borrowed it one time to use on the Tasha Cobbs record and then he had it for like 18 months or something mm. and I think he wore it quite slap out so I've been using yeah. the Waco I think it has more throw than most of your typical like Dunlop wall enclosures which I like yeah um yeah you I can change the that's something we should talk about like what our wall like how we because everyone's perception of a wah is different. Like, we don't have to do it. This is an episode. I think a wah episode. All right. A wah episode. <laughs> yeah, wah episode. Write it, write it down. <laughs> okay. All right. Continue. <laughs> um, I've not played the, the dinosaur. I'm not sure. I is assume like a, it's like a, a dinocomp. Dyna yeah. Like Ross. Um, you know, I, I got to say, man, I'm a big fan of the jam stuff. You know, I shot my video on uh, Madison Cunningham yesterday, and I was using the mm. waterfall course yeah. and i just their stuff is so good yeah yeah no, they're fantastic and they're there's i think it's one of those things it's like i've met them so many times at nam and they've always been like so nice to me yeah. like yeah. it doesn't matter i don't care if like the stuff just <laughs> sounded like crap they're the nicest people in the world and so i'd want to support them yeah <laughs> every interaction stuff is great. yeah every interaction i've had with them has been super cool i, yeah. I really like them a lot um and they make one of my favorite fuzzes, the fuzz phrase. Uh, right. So good. So uh, let's see. Boss, was that, you said the DD7? DD3? Uh, the DD3. Yeah, okay. Classic. Classic. Like, can't go wrong. Can't. Yeah, it's like if you need a delay and you don't need it to oscillate, just get a DD3. Yeah, exactly. A memory man. I mean, you've got all the, the bases covered there delay-wise. I mean, yeah. 
outside of doing something, you know, a la Strymon or Line Six, where you've got the weird ice delays and the you know right. funky stuff like that, that I've never really used. I mean, there you go. Now, what's this chorus? I don't know about this. Uh, he says here. it's a Grobert. Uh, the one chorus, it's a Boss CE1 clone. So uh, the CE1, you know, the big daddy of them all, it's a classic. And it's, you know, it's got its own thing. It's got a preamp, so it can kind of drive, you know, your signal and distort in its own special way. It's an incredible, incredible chorus. Yeah, the, the big daddy boss sauce of uh, choruses. Yes. Um, Hall of Fame, ditto, straight ahead. And then Easy. into the Iridium with the York Audio IRs. I have the York Audio IRs, um, okay. Justin. Uh, I'm said loaned them to me, but there's a, it's a file. So <laughs> yeah. he, let me loan you this via email. It was actually really nice when I was making my IRs a couple of years ago. He um, he sent me his as like I guess like a benchmark thing, and his are very very good, very good. Yeah. So um, okay, I mean I got to give major points for this guitar setup. You don't have humbuckers. That's the one the one rub here. He said in the chat P90s greater than PAFs for him. Mm. So, I mean, okay. Yeah, okay. Sure. I can get All with right. that. I can get with that. I If I had to change one of these guitars, I'd swap the Strat out for mm-hmm. a Les Paul. I'd go Lester. Man, you go three Gibson-esque guitars. Yeah, but I'm... No I'm, single I'm, coil? Well, no Fender single coil. <sighs> All right, strike that. Add a Les Paul to the setup. <laughs> um, he said he has a Tokai of some sort. I don't know the model, so maybe he does have like a a, a hum, humbucker guitar. But yeah, anyway, it's not in the photo. So yeah, I mean, I, just looking at this rig, I can kind of hear the style of music that he plays, and it's like yeah. I think a Les Paul would would really work there, you know. Mm. So um, whatever you do, though, do not sell that SG. That's a no. That's, that's a, a lifer. lifer. Yeah. yeah, that is a lifer. If it's anything like mine, it's a lifer. Um, what is the actual board? Do we talk about the board? Uh, he said it's a uh, a holy board. H O L E Y board. It looks good. Empowered by chocks. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know, it looks great. Uh, yeah. I don't know. So All right. Sweet. I like this. Humbuckers are missing. Um, I probably would want to have an amp around, yeah. you know, that's, that's somewhat important to me. So I'm going to give this, um, 9.0. Okay. Okay. 9.0 show oils. I dig it. I, I'm, I'm kind of right there with you. I, although like I could, I, I feel like with the P90 with the right setup, it's going to get you like so close to humbucker territory. Mm-hmm. Um, then I'm going to give that a pass, but I think. What this rig needs more than anything is a loud amp, because uh, mm-hmm. like that, if if just like seeing all that and then striking the iridium or bypassing it and going into a big amp, it would just be like, be perfect. Yeah. So I want to give it because of that. I want an amp. I need an amp, and I don't really like the iridium that much personally. I want to give it an eight point nine. Okay, I mean that's a killer rig, man. Fantastic. Really, really well done. Uh, great to- choice in furniture as well. <laughs> As a, if I do say so myself, and uh, yeah. a great photo, yeah, bravo! That's how you do it, people. Boom, pow, so zap. Speaking of uh, speaking of uh, rig rig dipping, we're gonna get into it on this one. Gonna get into it, man. So, tell the people what we're gonna do today. All right, we've had requests for this for a little while, and we figured, you know, today of all days, today's the day, you know. If, if you're going to pick a day, today is the day to do this thing. And today is the day that we are going to dip each other's rigs. Boom. So I'm going to drop them in the Discord chat. But we're actually going to we're going to try to play some stuff live on, yeah. the, on the air yeah. here. <laughs> we're going to try it out. We're going to see what happens, you know. Uh, we, we took some time before, this, before we went live to get our, uh, our signal chain set up and rolling here. Look at you. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> God. You would do some shit like this. Well, okay, it's funny. So today, I uh, uh, my son's school. He's he's just in pre-K, but they had a like a career, like parents' career day, and so I went in. I took the catalyst. I took a Mythos board, and I took my Les Paul, and I played for the kids, and they got they were super excited. And then I was bringing the Klon on this little board to the shop, 
And because uh, some of the guys at Novo were like, I've never heard a real Klon. I, you know, I want to compare it to like a Mjolnir and all that stuff. I was like, let's do it. So I have all this. And so there it is. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to bring it, the Klon to show the kids. Like, now, kids. Yeah, I lo- okay. <laughs> just if so find- everyone knows, <laughs> this is a real one. Now, in the in the guitar world, you're going to encounter a lot of counterfeits. Uh, see Dipped in Tone Season 2 episode, um, whatever that was. Yeah. But... Uh, if the serif on the R is not quite as prominent, you're looking right. at a fake. Right. Uh, or this will I, be on the test. Say, <laughs> I want to see you guys taking notes. I mean, we're outside Nashville, kids. If your mom or dad has one of these in a closet under a bed, just bring it to school and give it to my son. <laughs> you turn around on the whiteboard, you start <laughs> writing down. Okay, now, what is a charge pump? <laughs> right. Anybody? Questions? Anyone, uh, anyone know? Man. What should we never do with our clons? Don't they're, run 18 volts. That's right. Good job, everyone. They're four, so they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> it was It was kind of like, all right, I'm going to talk about what I do, and they were just like running around, so I don't know. <laughs> but it was fun. But anyway, so I mean- no, these you have, have the have... diodes. Kids, these have the diodes. You want to hear this. Listen, you, you want to hear this. Your rig is nothing to sneeze at. No. And, and this shouldn't be a dick measuring contest. This is just we're talking about each other's <laughs> rigs. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say your rig is probably more expensive than my rig just because of that Klon. Well, I mean, the Klon, the guitar, and the the, the amp Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, this is <laughs> – you, you might look at my rig and go like, ooh, he's got all the fancy shit. Well, Zach is, you know, making up for it in, uh, in, in, in cash. All right, you want to go first? Sure, I'll go first. So um, my rig we've got here is uh, my – I have it here. My 2014 R9, which has Whoa. made many appearances on, on the show here. Uh, perfect guitar, dare I say. Uh, amazing guitar. And it's All been of, it's been Murphyed, right? It Well, I, so Tom refinned the top. Literally, the only stock parts on it are the tuner. Uh, most of the screws are stock. Uh, which tuner? Guard, so uh, all D the tuners. The oh, okay. All the tuners are stock. I thought you said you left one stock no, tuner. No. On the <laughs> like the strap buttons are stock. Um the thumb cutters are stock, the pit guard bracket stock, and the but jack. But you still got stock, stock strap buttons. Yeah, I use I use oh, Grolsch. I use cringe, Grolsch things. Dude, gross. Uh, That's <laughs> but everything the else is changed. First thing I change. I I just use the Grolsch uh, things, and they work fine for me because I'm. And uh, what pickups are in there currently? So these pickups are the RS Guitar Works Lindy Fraylin True Sixties, and they have okay. throwback covers, so they just like they look the part, they sound the part. Oh, you swap the covers. Oh yeah, there's like oh. nuts. <laughs> what do you mean? That, oh yeah, <laughs> it's not something pe- people typically do. Yeah, just nuts like me. I mean, yeah. literally everything, like the switch tip, even the switch nut. I mean, I think the switch itself might be stock, but the the knurled nut is different because I don't yeah. think the Gibson one looks. We right. should point out on my list, Paul. You you sent me. Uh, so mine's a 2019 USA. Yeah. Standard and uh, Zach was unsatisfied with the quality of the plastics <laughs> on uh, on the, the USA standard. So how much did you spend on this plastic pack? Did you so send me? that those plastics, that's from Philadelphia Luthier Tools, and th- those that company's awesome. It's like uh, like an everyman Stumac. Okay. And I think on the guard, the pickup rings and the poker chip was only probably like 40 or 50 bucks. Okay. So, All right. Like that's not bad. I mean, the pick guard on my guitar alone was fifty bucks. So it's yeah, like, you can spend way more on plastics than than this. It, it's in, my switch tip on my guitar was twenty dollars. Like it's Although like I, it's ridiculous. <coughs> I think I am gonna swap the switch tip out for uh, for this one here. Oh yeah. What does that say? Cease and desist. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Show some support for Chipson. Um, oh jeez. Yeah. So wait. Let's just get a quick Les Paul comparison here. Hold yours up. Wow. Yeah, dude. Yours looks. Although, you know, the, the, I will say the finish, you can tell there's there's quite a difference in the quality of the finish there. Well, um, and I mean, just the flame. You just, you yeah. can see, I mean, like, look, like when I do that. Yeah. Like, look, <laughs> oh my God, it really jumps out at you there, doesn't it? Yeah, look at that. Wow, it's really look at move, it. It's really would, three-dimensional would there. Would you just look at the flame on that uh, that there, Les Paul? Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, yours so. is definitely more in the, um, like, dentist lawyer category of flame. Mine's more, like... Well, hell, it ought to be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Much on papers, thank you, believe that, dude. But, I was in the, uh, I was in Nashville last weekend, and uh, we went to um, what's that vintage store in in Twelve South, the the black 
like all painted black on the outside. Oh yeah, I don't know the name of it. <sighs> I, I know Savant or something like that. Yeah, or so- <laughs> Sauvage. We were, yeah, something like that. We were walking in, and this this old guy was walking out. And uh, Twelve South is you know typical tourist town. <laughs> he looks at me and my buddy. He goes, "Man, I got used Wranglers over there for hundred ten bucks. You believe that?" Sh-? And then just walked out. <laughs> I was like, yeah, welcome to Nashville, man. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> oh, anyway. Well, all right, cool. That, so, that's cool. So, yeah, that this this Les Paul is going into my Klon. Yep. Uh, my 2006 Silver Klon. Humble all brag. of that is going into my RE202 Roland Space Echo. Uh-huh. And it's on a board with a Chalks power supply that is only there for the Space Echo because the Klon's running on a battery. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay, what kind of brat battery does it have? I don't know. Just like a Duracell. Just normal. Oh, okay. I'm not too... Don't play it down like you don't know what's in there. You, you totally no, I, do, I really don't. It's probably like a ray of vac or just a normal battery. <laughs> um, uh, and then my amp is my Bloomfield, my two rock Bloomfield drive. Um, and I tried to run it through the aux, but my room sucks and was getting a lot of static and stuff. So we just got, I just, I did the Gregor Heilden thing and just piled up some stuff and put an SM57 on it. So bingo. Pretty, easy. And then Easy. I sent phantom power to it, so and it doesn't have a transformer, so hopefully right, it didn't blow it up. Which normally you can do with a 57. You can send phantom to a 57 unless you've done the transformer mod where you pull the transformer out of the 57. Then you generally don't want to do that, but I think yeah, you're fine. It's fine. It Dude, works. 57s, look, they're 100 bucks. You can you can record a guitar amp with them, and then you can go, you know, I don't know, drive, uh, use it as a pry bar or something. Oh, later, yeah. And it's, it's still fine. So don't worry about your 57. It'll be all right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want to do you want to play it now? Do you want to do a little little sound demo here? Sure. So we'll try to. I'll probably mute my my mic. So. Yep. All right. So I'll just go through a couple tones. Uh, and yeah, here we go. Muting my mic. <laughs> Sounds like a Gibson. G's a little out. Oh, oh you, I oh. know. Uh, so I'll, I'll go through the, the channels on the amp, and then I'll kick on the Klon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Here I go. actually really am excited to hear this amp. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Now, does that amp have tremolo? The amp just has reverb. So it has... Uh. It's got the, the the normal channel. The lead channel like slams into that, and then a tone stack by di, pff, bypass. So, <laughs> uh, but because it's so choked by the master, so I'm not just completely destroying, you know, everything. Uh, it kind of gets a little sizzly. Mm-hmm. Like it's okay with the lead, but when you stack them both, now if I turn on just the. Uh, if I do the tone stack bypass without the lead uh, channel on, mm-hmm. it's got like a tweety thing. Yeah. But it's just uh, it's so good. No, it sounds really good. So I actually thought when you, because you went through three different gain stages, the first one was the amp. The second one, I thought you had kicked on the Klon, but then you kicked on the Klon and it was a completely different, a completely different kind of uh, clipping. Yeah, I mean, if I do that again, I mean, I'll just leave my mic on and then we can just mute it because it's, you know, I'm recording a separate track. Yeah. Um, so, like, if I go to the lead, or if I go just clean with the Klon. Um, my guitar is out of tune. But, like, it's just that. And I, I use the Klon. It's set a little gainier to kind of be more obvious. Right. But if I was, like, if I was going to gig, I would probably, I would probably, like, have my amp here and then go to the lead channel. And then I'd kick on the Klon. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah. And I do something like that. Man, see, that's a great, that, that is all you really need, you know? And, and I say this as someone that used to have like, literally, I think at, at one time I had five overdrives on my board at one time. And they yeah. all just kind of sounded sort of the same. And I thought I was getting different things out of them, and I really wasn't. I really think if you've got an amp like that, you can totally get away with your super simple, small little rig. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, um, and it was funny. Like, I saw someone on the That Pedal Show Facebook group, and they were like, what's up with all these people having gigantic pedal boards and then a $5,000 amp? to just only use the pedal, the, the amp is like a clean pedal platform. Uh-huh. That's really lame. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it is. Uh-huh. So, I mean, yeah. look, whatever blows your skirt up, don't let right. us tell you that, that you know, you're, uh, you're wrong. But I would, I would agree with that. Like, you know, if, um, yeah, I, the clean pedal platform thing is cool. I've done it, did it for years. It, it's cool. But yeah, like if you're buying an amp, like that two rock, four or $5,000 amp, channel switching, it's got all these, um, you know, effects loop and built-in reverb and everything, you don't need like five or six overdrives on your board. You need something really good, maybe in yeah. front of it, maybe a fuzz even. And uh, then, yeah, use your amp, use your volume, and learn how to play with dynamics. And you've got all the the gain stages you would need right there. Yeah, it's pretty funny in the chat. Rob's, Rob F says, what, is, what does it say about Zach if he's not using a Mythos pedal? I mean, that's true. <laughs> this is like, this is just the pedal board I, I, I had made. <laughs> Yep. Uh, and like, this is what I like. And if I was going to like, if I, if I had to do another gig or something, or I needed more than this, I would go Oracle, a Wildwood Mjolnir and like one more thing. And that's it. That's just, this is just what I play. And normally when I play guitar, I don't even use, uh, pedals. Like I know that's Uh. ironic, but I'm just like, I just like plugging into the amp and playing loud and just relying on my volume knob. So, okay. All right. So then I think what we should do is we'll talk about my rig. Yeah. I'll play, and then we'll rate, and then we'll ask we'll ask the people uh, for a rating. Sure. In the comments, people in the chat, let us know. So, um, yeah, sounded good, though. I really dig it. Cool. I can't really tell. It's just like my, I'm just getting blown <laughs> out here. <laughs> nice. Okay. Well, uh, let me – I've got a handy little um, – Professional. Ooh, boom. Bam. Bam. Here, wait, let's see. Yeah, let's see if we can re, uh, reset. Zip. Look at that. My God. Can I, can I make you the... There you go. That's a thing of beauty right there. All right, so this is um, this is my board. Uh, this is the, quote, studio board that Mason from Vertex built for me like mm-hmm. two years ago now, a little over two years ago. Uh, the idea with this is basically to have something that was easy to swap stuff in and out of, all based around the HX effects. So the HX effects is kind of the, the brains, the operation. Um, underneath the tier... Under the preamp mark two, Mason built me an interface, and it's it's pretty cool. So guitar in, it's got an input buffer, then out but an output buffer going into the amp, and then the guitar signal is actually coming around, and I believe it's hitting the uh, Sir Henry. No, sorry, it's hitting the fuzz first, and then it's going across. So fuzz, synesthesia, mule near zio, then coming across. And hitting the Sir Henry. The reason we put it on the right side of the board is the Sir Henry has one of those expression knobs on the side of it. You yeah. You roll it up and down with your foot. So, so you, you use Univibe that further back in your chain. Um, yeah. Well, so here's here's huh. the thing about this board is this kind of the way I've got it set up right now, it sort of throws signal chain stuff out the window because typically, oh, okay. like when I'm recording as in a studio situation, I'm not usually usually using <coughs> excuse me my allergies are killing me. Um, I'm not usually using a lot of this stuff on at the same time because oh, okay. I'm recording parts and I might have one or two kind of sounds that I'm using. So I really just needed a board that would let me get in and out of it really easily and would hold stuff um, for me to take around to studio stuff. Now with the pandemic yeah. happening, I have this board's basically never left the house. So, um, anyways. Then from there, it's going uh, preamp mark two, then into the HX effects, and then out the um, the space that goes the last thing. So uh, I also have a RE202. Yeah, the in the chat, they're saying, spend some time talking about them space echoes. <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. There's one more thing to cover, though. So in the interface in the back, um, we have two effects loops, which are wired to the two effects loops in the HX effects. Mm. And what I use that for is my tape echo, my... my um, 
right. uh, multi-echo, multi-vox up there. So it's cool because you can actually patch in an outboard effect <clears throat> pretty easily into the board, and then I have it set up on an effects loop. Right Look there. at them socks. Look at them. <laughs> they didn't think about us uh, doing this today. So it's fine. Yeah. Um, there's that guitar. Killer. Of course. Of course. You know. And we should say that, like, we were talking about this. It's like, well, which rig are we talking about? Because I've been using fly yeah. rigs a lot recently. And it's like, what would you grab right now to go to a gig with? And uh, this is it for me. Um, and then I'm going into my divided by 13 RSA 23 and into the aux. So, um, oh, I thought you were going into that Supro. Well, I changed. Oh, okay. To go into the, the RSA 23. So um, this is just the amp as I have it set right now. So kind of edge a breakup. If I really dig in, it'll break up quite a bit on its own. Oh, uh, hold on, wait a second. Uh, but then I can lighten up and get like a cleanish kind of sound. Yeah. Uh, and then if I go, let's see, go through a couple tones here. Um, so here's like a kind of long reverb I have on the on the. Um, HX, so it's like a cave kind of sound. We'll have to mute my mic too, so you don't hear the strings coming through. Yeah. But and then, so one of my favorite things on this board is the synesthesia from GFI. This is a total secret weapon. So right now, this is a a bad vinyl preset. So it's like a really warped vinyl pitch modulation kind of sound. And then on top of a like spring reverb. You know, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and then Jex Fox. This is like a Fox tone machine. One of my favorite fuzzes ever. Can you can, can you kill the fuzz or the octave on it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. And then uh, what I like to do is octave on long reverb, roll the neck volume down. Yeah. And get the like kind of ring mod. that kind of thing. Yeah. And then the Sir Henry uh, Tinsley Audio, Sir Henry Univibe. Turn that off and get kind of a... Uh, Killer, killer univibe. Yeah. Um, and then, let's see, what else? Preamp Mark II, really versatile. I actually like using that a lot. Um, I will use this board to bust vocals through or drums through sometimes to mix with, and I like using this. Um, it's a setup as a fuzz sound. Just a crazy... That's fun. Uh, then uh, Mjolnir. Of course. I mean, can't go wrong. Yeah. Because I can't afford a real clone. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Now, I would say if I had space in this slot, if the uh, synesthesia wasn't there, I would have the Wildwood there. Uh, yeah. That sounds cool. That kind of does. The, I can kind of do sort of the same thing you had where I dial the tone back and get... Yeah. And I then, think, um, yeah. I was going to say, like, I think clons are, like, kind of funny because it's so, like, for, I mean, how, how I'm hearing it right now when I was playing doesn't sound like how I normally perceive it. 
right. because I'm hearing it a lot through this, and it's yeah. it's like I totally would have to dial this in to be like the recording ready setup that I would normally use. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, and I'm using. I mean, our two rigs right now are completely different. So the, the most know, polar opposite. The most polar opposite. <laughs> and then last thing to focus on here is um, the Zio from Source Audio. This has become mm-hmm. like one of my favorite pedals this year. It is the classic just straight ahead analog boost. So that's on the um, studio setting. So it's got different, you know, boost types. So sure. uh, the Echoplex, that's one of my, uh, my favorites. So like just the Zio into a really good amp. I mean, that's really all the gain I would ever need for a session. Right. Does it have a, like a... Does it have like a master volume or is it just pure boost? Yeah, it's just it's just output. It's got an output volume oh, okay. on the left. Um, so and then yeah, I mean just a couple other like let's see, like you can get some some crazy sounds out of the synesthesia. Um, now you might think that's like where the hell would you ever use that? But I actually did use this on a record. Mm-hmm. Um, if you watch my studio vlog video from Germany, you'll know where that sound comes from. Uh, what else we have in here? <laughs> oh, that's a weird arpeggiator. Hold on, let me see. You know, isn't it kind of funny how like all these sounds that are all so wacky, like when we were first starting out playing guitar, I mean, especially me, like all that stuff kind of existed in like a Zoom 505. It just yeah. sounded really bad, but now right. it sounds good and it's cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like all these weird, just funky synth things that you can yeah. do that I like to do sometimes just to add sort of a, a, a top layer on top of a, a song or something, you know? Like, yeah. You, um, let's see here. And then I can get more old school like amp trim or phase 90 which you can also do with the hx effects so there's some some redundancy yeah. there um but with both of these i can do something weird with the synesthesia and then something more traditional with the with the hx effects sure so, yeah yeah i mean like the, the, i feel like our rigs are so like i mean okay i don't th- it would be hard for me to sit down with your rig. And, I mean, I could get sounds, but I would feel lost. Uh, uh, like if I was in, if, I mean, if it was just a studio thing and we we're trying to find sounds for a thing, as long as I could take a photo of it and remember how mm-hmm. in the world I got that sound. Um, so for me, it's like, it's so, that's super intimidating. Uh, but I mean, it all sounds great. But for me, like I couldn't, I, I just, I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> I, well, to me, this is fun. Like I like spinning, like spending time just experimenting um, like just experimenting with sounds like here is a, a chorus in the synesthesia just kind of an old school chorus sound you know it's like okay well, what can we add to that well let's add some some delay from the boss you know let's just see what happens so if I go um, so now it's just like old school kind of chorus and tape delay kind of sound, you know, which yeah. is cool. And then turn that off, turn that off, and then go here, go here, and now we're in Band of Gypsies. So that's right. That's why I like having some options, you know. Yeah. I think it's funny that's like uh ha- like just the 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 difference in like like it, okay, wait, hold on. What I'm, what I'm thinking is like if you were going to just sit down and play guitar, what what would you what would you play? Like what would you get? Me? Is it just that? Yeah. Like or how? It- uh, yeah, I would do this because okay. I I love that. What's what's fun for me with guitar nowadays is like I feel like I've gotten all the chops I'm gonna get. You know what I mean? Like I there's always room to improve and there's things to learn and things to get better at. But but the days of me like 
sitting down and transcribing solos and trying to get licks under my hands and trying to get faster and work on my technique. Just honestly, a lot of that stuff's behind me now. Yeah. Where I want to grow as a musician and as a guitar player is in my sounds and in, in my ideas in terms of like thinking more along the lines of a producer rather than a guitar player. So sure. like experimenting and coming up with really cool textures or just even really simple guitar sounds that sound really good, like that fit the sound of whatever type of song or vibe I might be playing over. That's what really gets me excited now. Um, yeah. You know, but I really like the way your rig sounded. <laughs> so wow. it's like, so for me, like if I played your rig, I'm going to instantly go to the thing that you went to, which are like the super fun, like pocket blues and, and kind of things, you know? Yeah. I think one thing that some people would see, my setup and think, oh, like you can only do like a few things with it. But I think that's, that's not really true because it's all about how you use it. Because if I'm, let's say, whoa, I'll whoa. turn that off. Like if, it, even if I'm just using the amp and let's say I go, I, I lift that, that tone stack. Like you can just do funky stuff. Like you, you don't have to, like that's giving me all the compression I need mm -hmm. and that feeling. But at the same time, with the same, like the only thing I'm touching is like my the the pickup and right. like how I'm playing. I mean, it still has that vibe, right? You know, but um, it's all just down to like just this and like this for me, and that's what makes me like so excited about playing guitar because um, I get so such few like moments to enjoy it. And that aspect, and I'll kind of yeah. want it to be pure, right? Um, which <coughs> no, is, I, I mean, like, because I love like all sorts of crazy music and like stuff with all sorts of like wild effects. Like I dig it, but then it, it did, I don't know. It's just like my headspace is here. Yeah. Um. So it's it's just an interesting, and, and I it's so ironic. <laughs> well, both are equally valid. Like I there's there's no right or wrong answer here. Like so for me yesterday making this Madison Cunningham video, I was I spent a lot of time focusing in on, like, okay, first of all, her playing is incredible. The parts she writes is incredible. But there's more happening there than just the parts that she's playing, and it's the sound. It's yeah. The the interesting textural kind of feel that she's getting from her guitar sound. And I got really interested in what was going on there. And a huge part of her sound is an always on pitch modulation, like, mm. you know, a, a chorus on the vibrato setting or a, a univibe on the vibrato setting, like something that's a, a hard wave form, like a triangle wave pitch vibrato. That's not something I ever would do on my own, like, hey, let's turn on this pitch vibrato that's knocking the chords in and out of tune and leave it on all the time. But yeah. in the case of her thing, like um, that, that riff, pin it down that I talked about, I'm going to be in a different key than she's in. But like, if I go, okay, so back to this bad vinyl setting. Let me turn the mix up. Yeah. You can hear it. Yeah, so that's a little bit more like strong example. And then we'll turn on like a, a little like slapback and a little reverb from the the space echo the 202 mm -hmm. so what's cool is with her sound she's not playing these big lush chords that would like really call attention to the pitch like kind of go oh it sounds like really yeah. seasick instead she's going let me turn that down so like, i think that's a very new well like, like John Schofield has that thing, but I think that's like a new guitarist thing where it's all, there's always some pitch thing. Yeah. Happening. It's, it's very hot right now. Like, um, yeah. Tom Mish did that a lot on that. Um, what kind of music record, but like, just listen to this in, in the context of what I'm playing, you, I turned the, the mix down a little bit so you can still hear quite a bit of pitch modulation happening. But when you play her part, You don't really hear the pitch modulation. Yeah. But it's adding, you kind of miss it when it's not there. So if I turn it off, it's like yeah. not as 3D. Yeah. That's what gets me excited about guitar stuff now is little things like that. Like, oh, sh I'm going to add that to my trick bag now. Yeah. You that, know? It's, it's, it's like it's adding space or just filling space in a different way. Yeah. Um, 
And in and the I, context of a rest of a band like that, you're not going to notice the pitch shifting. You're just going to notice the guitar feels like thicker, heavier, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. <clears throat> I, I, it's like why whenever I, I used to gig with a Univibe, I just used it in vibrato mode set kind of deep, but really slow. And yeah. then all the volume all the way up. Yeah. And it was just like, it just made everything kind of like pulse back and forth. And you couldn't, yeah. you didn't know it unless it was, if it was just me playing, you could hear it, but otherwise you'd never know it. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's it. Two different rigs, two different styles, yeah. two different approaches. So you know. what would you rate my rig? <laughs> Such Oof. a weird All right. thing. Okay. I, I'm missing, speaking of modulation, I'm missing oh. a tremolo. That's the only thing I'm missing mm. with that rig because What's interesting is I just showed all this stuff that I like to use, but for my band, for Noah, I could use your rig as it's set right now with a tremolo and basically do everything I would ever need to do with that band. Minus I need an open G guitar and an open D wow. guitar. But right. other than that. Like um so I mean, and it would sound just killer for that band and for that yeah. sound. So with that in mind, I mean, yeah, I I got to give it a 9.7. Dang. <laughs> 9.7 shalels for me, dog. That's that's awesome. Well, thank you. I, you know, it's funny. Like, tremolo is probably my least favorite modulation. Really? Yeah. I like it. But, like, if I if you said bring a modulation, I'd grab a chorus or, mm. a, or a flanger um, or something like that first. And yeah. Then, then maybe a chorus. I mean, like, harmonic trim, sure, but just, like, normal, like, bias or, you know, optical sort of trim thing. Yeah, I enjoy it, but it's not my favorite. Yeah, for, well, well, I was just gonna say for your rig, like it's it's harder for me because like for me that rig is is like it's not me at all. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, the guitar is, the amp is, and there are pedals in there, obviously, that are. But as a whole, I would that would just just pump the brakes on me immediately. Ah. so I I think for me, I'd give your rig. I want to say 7.8. Oh, I'm wow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Cold-blooded. Get rid of all those pedals. <laughs> Cold-blooded, man. It's, it's not bad. Like, that's a passing grade. <laughs> it's a, you know, it's just like my high school career. It's you, oh, yeah. you passed. D you means diploma, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, so, so you think all of the, you would get option paralysis. Oh, yeah. Like, bad. Mm. And that was something that I, I used to, because I used to be in like a Mars Volta-esque band and and I had a pedal train pro with two DL fours and like pitch uh, or a uh, like circuit bent pedals that I did like on the board. And I, I just like lost myself in it. And I realized I spent all this time like on my hands and knees doing this and not just playing my guitar. And that was like a pivotal moment in my life when I realized like, this is not how I enjoy the instrument. So, do you feel? Do you feel that with this stuff in front of you, you have to use it because it's in front of you? Yeah. yeah uh, I'm like, see, okay, that's our that's our disconnect. Like, yeah. I'm totally happy playing all day without turning any of this shit on. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it it feels like it feels wasteful for me or something. Mm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. See, but I'm I'm like a uh, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Sure. Kind of kind of person. You know, so for it. me, like it doesn't, I don't feel wasteful, uh, at all. Like if I were to take this board out on a gig, like with Noah's band, I would only play the fuzz, the mule maybe the Zio and, uh, just the HX effects probably. Right. That's all I would need. But I wouldn't feel bad that I had the Sir Henry on the board or the preamp Mark two or the right. synesthesia because you know, that's. It's, they just do different things for different times, you know? Sure. And the whole point of this episode, ladies and gentlemen, is for us to, like, poke at each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm going to revise my score to six shoils because... Ah, uh, damn. Look you. at That's this, why. like, piece of crap modified, not yeah. even original. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, well, we want to know your ratings for our rigs in the comments section down below and why you rated them that way. That's the whole point of dipping somebody's rig is it's not just a number. You got to say why. And what you would change. That's that's the whole thing, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, look, here's the other thing. I don't care. I don't care if somebody gives me a, a 2.0 shoils. I like this rig. Hey. Yeah, I mean, like, it's funny. Like, 
I have my catalyst over here as well. Mm -hmm. And I would be <laughs> now if I was at an like uh, playing around other human beings, not in a gig situation, just trying to be mindful. I would be just as happy plugging that Les Paul into that catalyst straight mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. playing guitar. That would yeah. be just as happy. So I don't know. To me, I just need to. I just need to play. Yeah. So. Well, there you um, go. Uh, shill of the week. Are we going to shill anything? Oh God, I didn't even. <laughs> I, didn't I didn't even think, think about, about it. it. Uh, you know, this whole vi this whole episode is just one big shill. Yeah, so, I mean, um, look at me. Like I'm just. This, this yeah. is My rig is disgusting. <laughs> I'm, and I'm shilling for Novo and for Willie Nelson and for everybody else for that plant behind me. And, you know, right. That's all we are, ladies I, and gentlemen. I want uh, everyone, uh, especially if you're, if you're a, a patron, um, to, again, put what you want to see from us. If you have merch ideas, I mean, we're going to do, we're going to do that PV logo. We're going to get there. Oh, yeah. It's happening. But, uh, like, all the stuff, like, let us know what you want. And, so far as like the future of Dipped in Tone, what do you want to, like, where do you see us going? Because, I mean, we have all these ideas. There's all this stuff happening that we're going to share soon. But like, who do you want us to talk to? You know, like, let us know. I'm super pumped to see what people expect from this as it grows. And I want it to keep growing. I want it to be like the thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's going to grow for sure. World domination, y'all. We talked about it a year ago. And, uh, you know, we're well on our way. <laughs> Dipped in Tone 2024. Let's go. Finally. All right. Appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe uh, on YouTube and wherever you're listening or viewing. And uh, see you all real soon. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye.